Hello YouTube, it's Doss Gregor. And you're thinking, is my computer broke? Are you sure I'm on the right channel? This channel's been dead for months. No, no, the rumors of my demise are quite exaggerated. I am still around. But I have been having some problems and some hardware issues, and I want to say a big thank you to one of my YouTube subscribers who found me a couple months ago and we've chatted and visited. He heard about my problems and he actually bought me a new motherboard for my laptop and assisted with trying to get that all replaced because before that my system would start to get overtaxed and then the sound would just die on me and I couldn't do anything with it other than power it off, pull the battery, plug everything back in and then I could get it to work until it would die again. And slowly the system was getting worse and worse. I mean I was able to lower for instance the CPU usage from 2.4 gigahertz down to 2 gigahertz to 1.9 to the point where I was down to about 1.2 gigahertz and it would last a couple hours before the sound would die. It was getting worse and worse. And that brings me to today's topic that I wanted to discuss. It is a handy utility called CPU Power. And as you'll see here, I've got a CPU load monitor running and I've also got my CPU and memory running because I've been trying to monitor how my system is operating. I slowly was seeing, first off, that as I compiled code, things were taking much longer than I thought they ought to to compile. And with this program, CPU Power, which you can get if you do emerge-s CPU power, if I can spell power, there we go, and it should bring up this utility right here. Once it is installed, I believe I can just say help, you have a couple commands. Frequency info, frequency set, idle info and idle set, etc, etc. The two biggest ones, of course, are going to be frequency info and frequency set. And I believe that if you use help with CPU power, help, frequency, set, it will tell you the different min, maximums, the governors, setting of the frequency with dash G and dash S. These are the two most important ones right here. And of course there's a lot more information here. So if we do a CPU power and we do frequency dash info, you can see what the driver is that it's using to check on that. And you can see the different frequency steps and the available governors. User space will allow you to change to whatever frequency step you'd like. Power save, of course, is going to be the, the smallest amount of power and frequency set that you would need just to barely get by. On demand will and should fluctuate that CPU frequency based upon the load that you have. And performance is going to give you the best of the best that you can get full speed ahead and when you're compiling code with Gen 2 you really want as the best you can get. You don't want to be trying to compile code at 800 megahertz. This system is a Core i7 2.4 gigahertz and I do my best when I'm compiling to make sure that I was I'm compiling at the fastest that I can. And what I had found, I'll give an example, Chromium used to only take a couple hours to compile suddenly someday and I didn't put two and two together after a while I did a update to the kernel and afterwards things were just so slow and chromium was taking double that four to five hours to compile and some people would say roll their eyes and say why don't you just go get yourself a bin distribution you could have had that done in less than 10 seconds just by saying sudo apt get install blah 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 and 
Yeah, yeah, it would be a lot nicer sometimes, and sometimes I think that I spend a lot of my life just compiling code. But I just feel so comfortable in Gen 2 and the way it works that it's difficult for me to give that up. There's so much more control you have with Gen 2 that I just really enjoy it. But I digress. We're talking here about the CPU power and the fact that it was actually compiling code at a much slower rate. Now, I do believe that it was set on demand, and that should have given me an indication that there was a problem with my system because I didn't used to have that problem. And what I noticed was that it was running that at such a slow speed that it was taking so much longer to compile my code. And so I would change it to user space and set it to 2.4 gigahertz. And at that point, things were great. And then everything started to give me problems because the problem with the motherboard, sound would go out, other issues. And like I said, I'm very thankful for a, for a subscriber of mine that, that uh, saw that and went ahead and really blessed me with a with with being able to replace that motherboard and now I'm back to full strength again and very happy so I wanted to share that with you with CPU power you can see what speed you're running you can manage it yourself you can take it down to power save if you don't need something and you just want it to run at a low speed or if you need that horsepower this is how you figure out that it's not running at what it should be able to run as for instance, to give a small example, both my kids I have running with Linux Mint. They say, now DOS, what are you talking about? You say how great Gen 2 is. My kids aren't worth compiling all their code on their systems just so they can use it. Besides that, they bust it up. Mint, Ubuntu, something like that. I can, boom. It's redone. It's fixed. It's running. We're good. Get them back up as fast as possible. Me, I don't mind tinkering for myself. But what I noticed when I looked at their machines and some of the applications that they were running, I was like, why are these so poor? And so I used these same commands. Now it's a little different with, with Ubuntu. They don't have this fancy CPU power wrapper that Gen 2 has. For instance, when you do this, it will change all the settings for all your CPU cores. Whereas the settings that I've seen with their system I have to manually set each core and thread for them. That, that's not too difficult with scripts. But what I did find was when they were running some of their applications, the system was running at the slowest possible speed that they could run. I honestly thought their system wasn't good enough to run some of the stuff that they were running. And what I found by messing around with the CPU sets and the CPU power options was that no, their system is quite capable. It just needed a little bit of tweaking and to kind of point it in the right direction of how much power to use on that CPU. And that's what makes this makes this utility such a great utility use. If you do CPU power, and we've already shown the CPU frequency info, if you do frequency dash set dash G, you can set it to on demand or user space, power save, etc. That's where those right here. I won't point at my screen because that doesn't do you any good. But you can see these. Now, you don't need too much, so you can say power save. And you need root. So, sudo sets all the CPU cores. And if we look at the info, you'll see we're now running at 800 megahertz. And if you wanted to be able to set these to your own level, you would change that to user space. Now you say, Dal Dos, what's the point of being able to do this? Well, if you want to have a little bit more control, say you don't want your system to eat up so much power because you're running at full strength for something that really only requires maybe a gigahertz or maybe 1.2 gigahertz. I find if I run certain applications, games, at full speed, I'm getting between 60 and 70 frames per second, which I never saw before because it was never running in its fullest potential. But I also found that I can use the user space option, and then I can use the dash F option, and we'll say 1.3 gigahertz. 
and if we do another info, we're running at 1.3, I can run it at that speed. It still works. It gives me 30 to 40 frames per second, say for instance in the game, and things are still good, and it's saving me a little bit of power on that battery. It's still running, and a big thing is it helps the, the, the heat. When I'm running things at full speed, I see my temperatures go through the roof and sometimes that's not a good thing. So by being able to manage the CPU power frequency and set it to what my needs are for that time, because sometimes on-demand just doesn't do that very well, then I'm able to do this with the CPU power. A very handy, very small utility, and very good to know about when you're thinking, is my system really running at its fullest potential, or am I being slowed down by some sort of a setting. I hope this helps and I hope that maybe you look at this and you see that maybe your system isn't running at its full potential. Maybe you have an older system and for some reason it's just not running too well. Look at CPU power or I believe with some other um, distributions at CPU set and you will find that you can make things run a lot better than you thought before. So if it's morning, evening, noon, or night, whatever you're having, I hope you have it. Enjoy it. We'll talk to you all later. Bye, guys.